Hello, welcome to the Reaper Podcast. I am your host, John Reaper. If you guys are hearing a faint noise, that's because it's my heater. It is extremely, extremely cold today. Um, I want to talk about several, several things that's been happening. Um, I actually got to see Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Dear God, that was that was an incredible, an incredible movie. Uh, there's a lot of mixed uh, reviews about it. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people do like it. To be honest, it's really up to you. Uh, for me, it was an awesome thing. Um, the last part was kind of like, what? You know, but... It's, it's incredible, there's a lot of twists, there's a lot of stuff that's like, I don't know about that. Um, but it's just, it's incredible, and I love the idea, and I love every aspect of uh, the idea behind it, and it was pretty awesome. Um, I, I could see where Mark Hamill did, did in fact... Um, you know, he said that he doesn't agree the the path taken for Luke, and I I I understand that because in this movie, from A New Hope all the way to the Return of the Jedi, and then when you get to the Last Jedi, it it didn't really feel like Luke. It didn't. Until a certain scene, and it's like, there's the old Luke. There's the old Luke. Um, but you have to, you have to understand that he's been through a lot with this, and he's just one person, one Jedi, taking on the responsibilities of this whole and thing. But then he he realizes something, and my great Jedi theory is like kind of true. Okay. Where, see, I thought Luke would be a great Jedi, which, in fact, it kind of is. But it's like, they're planting the seeds. They're, they're, they're planting the seeds right there, right there, right there, right there, for the great Jedis. And if you guys don't know what the great Jedis is, it's uh, the Jedis that adopt the power of the light and the power of the darkness but they don't succumb to the darkness. They're the balance in between. And they were in, in legends that were thrown out of uh, the Jedi Council and banned from the Jedi because, uh, you know, they're like, no, they're, they don't need to be dabbing in, in darkness powers, which is bullshit. Okay, to be honest, If you're all about the balance, and I've tried and tried, tried to explain this to people who are true, uh, are true Star Wars fans, was that the Force is about balance Um, throughout Star Wars. uh, Throughout the prequels, there were no balance. There was only what two Sith Lords, you know, and then there was. You know, because of the whole uh, two thing, you know, the two rule. And the Jedi were like a thousand of them, you know. And it was like, you know, and what's funny is like, everybody's like, oh, Anakin didn't bring balance to the Force. It's like, yeah, he kind of did. If you look at it at a standpoint... There was two uh, Sith Lords, Darth Vader and Dark Sidious. Uh, the other was Obi-Wan and Yoda. Which, I think Obi-Wan kind of knew about the whole balance between that. Because while Luke was kind of, tr- he was training Luke a little bit. And then he became one with the Force. And then there was two it gets two. Then, you know, 
all of a sudden Yoda dies and then now it's just Luke against two and then uh, boom now there's just Luke as one Jedi and I honestly when watching uh, and hearing what I was hearing in the movie I do agree with Luke I don't agree with his methods in the beginning because that was like really you know you're gonna be that way about it you know um but I do agree hip with this theory I do agree with every every aspect of it it's it's such a gray Jedi way uh but he is you know he's not really thinking of the full picture you know and um which I I love the aspect of it and uh, I cannot wait for nine which I have to wait two more two more years you know the standalone films are great and I like them but you know it, it they miss that Jedi feel they miss the whole Jedi and Sith you know confrontation and the religion and the teachings and they they miss that and then when I watched Rogue One I was I'm sorry it was a good movie it was it was a great good movie I'm sorry the only time I got excited is when I saw Darth Vader <laughs> yeah I'm sorry but that was that was it that's the only reason why I got excited seeing um, Darth Vader is because it's you know he's a Sith he's part of the whole and then seeing the lightsabers it's like ah because that's what Star Wars is Star Wars is not about it's about a universe yes of different characters and stuff like that but it's mainly focused on the rebels and the alliance and focused on the Sith and the Jedi you know the good versus the evil you know and it just it misses that the Holland Solo movie. I'm afraid to watch it because, to be honest, I really wish. Um, I think it was Chris Patrick, the one who does um, Star Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. I wish he was Han Solo. He would have made a perfect Han Solo. You know, a young Han Solo. He would. He would have been perfect. You know, just like if if they would do like a young Indiana Jones, like in his mid. You know. Um, he would be perfect as well. He has that wit. I'm sorry for yawning. <laughs> he has that wit about him, you know, and he does things that, like, okay, that's what Han Solo would do, you know. You know, he's a, he's a swindler. He's, he's everything in between that, and that's why I like, I like, uh, Harrison Ford's Han Solo. Now... <laughs> I'm trying not to spoil anything, but I may do like a spoiler, um, a spoiler thing for uh, The Last Jedi, because I do want to talk about it so much, you don't understand. Um, The Last Jedi was great, I liked it. Um, I took my son along, and my son loves... Uh, loves Star Wars. He loves um, his favorite character. Believe it or not, is Darth Vader. Um, he loves the Kylo Ren sword um, or lightsaber, but he is a Darth Vader fan thick and through. Cause like I've asked him, I go, okay, now you've seen the two char- or the two movies. Who's your still Who's your still favorite? And he goes, Darth Vader, <laughs> hands down. I go, okay, cool. Um, and it's cool because I think Darth Vader, you know, it did, it did cook with me too when I was little. Yeah, I was for Luke, but Vader was awesome, <laughs> you know. I mean, dude, Luke is spry and everything, and Vader being slow and mechanical and all that overbeats him, you know. It's like, when, where? It's like, trust me, watch the movies. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's because he was an experience as well. If he was an experienced Jedi, he, he wouldn't, you know, just like Return of the Jedi. Dude, he, he fought 
you know, pretty good with Vader. Um, gosh, I really don't want to give give it give anything away, but the the last Jedi was great. Well, let's move on from that because if not, I'm gonna say something that will spoil the whole uh, movie. Now, the the anime. Gundam. I've actually put a question. It wasn't really for um, it wasn't for the podcast, but I put it out there anyway, just as a general question. You know, just something that I could ask people to see what their opinions are. Now. What's cool is a couple people responded, and a lot of people was like, "Ah, I gotta pick, pick one. Why?" Which was, "What is your favorite Gundam uh, anime? What What's your favorite Gundam story?" I didn't really say mine. I just I was just curious of what people's say in all this. Um, a lot of people were saying different. Uh, different things with me to be honest the original Gundams the uh, you know Gundam and then Gundam Zeta and then Gundam uh, the Gundam Zeta movie Unicron I think, you know, just that storyline, the original Gundam storyline, I love that. Um, I like the Unicron, Unicron was awesome, because it, like, it harkens back to the original series, and it harkens back to the political, the Gundams. You know, I, I, I love it, you know, that, that's awesome. Um, the other series that I love is Wing, Gundam Wing. Um, I grew up, that was my first ever Gundam series. I grew up with that series. Gundam Wing was my favorite, all-time favorite. Um, I loved Gundam Wing Endless Waltz. I love that. I've watched that movie, like, so much. Or, uh, you know, miniseries or whatever. Um, they could have made it longer, to be honest. Uh, I, I liked Gundam Wing. Uh, I think it's just because it's got different types of Gundams. You know, not just one singular Gundam. You know, just different types. I, you know, I like the Wing Gundam. The Heavy. Uh, Death Psy, dude, Sand Rock. Uh, I can't remember. What, is, there, is there any other... I can't remember. Um, the dragon one, I can't remember. But it was awesome. And then Endless Waltz came out. And I'm like, what? And I never understood it. I thought maybe it was like new Gundams. But I didn't know that since they... When they upgraded their Gundams in the original series, that's their Gundams in Endless Waltz. It's just a different take on how they look. And to be honest, I like them both. But this one is awesome. I, I love it. Um, and the lastly is Gundam Iron Blood Orphans. I love that show because it reminds me so much. I don't know why. Okay, I don't know why. And maybe they, they took off with it. I don't know why. But it reminds me of the Diamond Dogs. It reminds me of Metal Gear Solid. You know, um, the political stuff also, um... You have the two main guys that just remind me of Miller and... Or Kazuhiro Miller, Kaz or whatever. And Venom. <laughs> you know, and it's extremely awesome. I love it. Um, I'm currently watching the English dub. I, I don't... want When I get an anime that has a English dub already established and I watch it, I wait until... I don't go ahead and watch the Japanese because it kind of ruins it for me, you know. And then I never want to go back to the English dub because I'm so far ahead. And why go all the way back? 
Same goes for Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, I'm so ahead, or Dragon Ball Super, I'm so ahead at this point to where it's like I don't really want to backtrack. I mean, I kind of do. Like, once it gets so far ahead in the English dub, I'll I'll go back and watch where I left off from there. Um, I think I left off from when he uh, they defeated Frieza. After that, it was kind of like, you know... Which I want to see the the future trunks arc. Um, I want to see that because that's going to be badass. I love it. I th- I think I'm just going to wait until that's done. When that's done, I'm going to go. Okay, I'm, now I'm going to watch it, and then I'll watch it. I'll watch a couple episodes and then quit watching it for a while, and then that way you know it can kind of string out. But but yeah. That's that's my top three, is the series of the original Gundams, um, Gundam and then Gundam Zeta and Unicron and then whatever else is in that timeline, Gundam Wing and uh, Gundam Iron Blood Orphans. To be honest, I wish they would bring Wing back. You know, maybe like, I don't know, a Descendants... Of of the original people, or you know, they're grown up, and the Gundams are remade, or somehow, you know, and that would be awesome. That's and well, well, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. I just remembered another series. I did like Gundam Build or Gundam. Was it Gundam Build Tri Fighters? I, I did like that because it's so awesome to, you know. It's like, it's a take in this world, but you put your Gundam, which is called Gunpla, which is your Gundam model, put it there and you battle with it like you're in a real Gundam. And the Gundam model, it brings it to life and stuff. That was badass. Watching that, I was like, oh my God, I wish this was real. You know, it was like Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, because when I played Yu-Gi-Oh when I was little, uh, when when the series was coming out, I was like, I wish that was real. And I know people has been trying to come up with that aspect of it. And that would be so awesome. And uh, when I saw Drive Fighters, I was like, oh my god, I wish that was real. <laughs> you know, I wish they would, you know, make a device that, you know, maybe not, maybe not that Pacific model, but like maybe scan it. And then, like, have it like a hologram come out and stuff like that, you know. I think that would be awesome, so, yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff's happening with Death Stranding and such. Um, a lot of people are, are freaking out because of certain reasons. You know, oh my god, it's this, or oh my god, you know. It's just a lot of people don't really get it. And what I mean by freaking out is, I mean like, you know, when I said that he might reveal it, uh, everybody thought they were gonna, he was gonna just reveal what the hell it was. I kind of knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, you know, like I like I said before, uh, I knew Hideo would, would put up a choice of either it's this, you know, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And of course, Hideo picked the choice that I thought he was going to do you know he was just not going to reveal what it is and he was just going to keep going on this and that's fine to be honest it's, it's fine you know because he likes messing with us and everything else you know um i like a good mystery as well um But, um, it's, it's hard to explain what's really going on. (sighs) And, um, 
So, and another thing is that survive. What What's funny is the piggy rating thing. Uh, you know, where they come up before a trailer, Peggy 18. The first trailer was Peggy 18, and now it's Peggy 16. I don't know what the hell that means, but... Um, they came out with... Showing of new stuff for Survive, and let me tell you, they changed the story up. And it's funny how... <laughs> it, it's so funny. Because they're like... Um, oh, by the way, and they make it to a point to tell people, this is a side mission. In the video, they, they pretty much said, it, it's a side mission, like with, you know, with Solid Snake and, and Raiden, those, those side missions, you know, uh, the Deja Vu and James Vu. <laughs> so... You know, they're, they're trying to get us off of track. It might be, but it's just weird, don't you think? That Death Stranding has, like, you know, black holes, other dimensions. And, and this is, like, you know, dimensions and black holes and stuff like that. It's just weird. Um, they changed the story of Survive, which I knew... Go back and watch the first trailer. It's a time jump, people. When the the in the first trailer, he gets sucked in. There is a time jump because then you see a diamond dogs person there, and you're like, oh, that's the main, the same guy. No, 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 no. Because if you look, there's another blonde guy with the beard and looks just like the the other guy who got sucked in. So I knew there was a time jump. Okay, you know, so what do you mean by that? I think the story has, has always been, they didn't really reveal much of the story. Now they've revealed a little bit more. You, as the main protagonist, don't get sucked in. Your friend does. And there's two people there, apparently. Your friend gets sucked in and you don't, you, you survive. But a secret organization uh, comes by wanting you to investigate and go in and rescue these people. So you, you get sent through. Now, what's funny is I think that's, I think that's for the multiplayer. I think single player is you go, go in. Um... You know, like, like you see, you just go in, get sucked in. Um, multiplayer could be, you know, you survive. It may be the same story. I don't know. I really don't know. But um, what's funny is the, the pictures they showed. They showed the picture of guy hanging on the rail, holding out for the other guy, and the other guy going to the portal. And then they showed another picture of the secret organization, which is funny, secret organization, hmm. you know, and it, jumping off this big helicopter um, on a, a different part of Mother Base, you know, with soldiers all around, and then there's bodies and body bags. Some people have claimed it could be um, linked to Death Stranding because of the um, the put disposal team six, you know, they handle with disposing of the the bodies or whatnot, a corpse disposal or something like that. Um, there was that, and I I don't know, but I think the secret organization is gonna be of either two things. One, it's probably gonna be bridges. If I have to guess, if it's linked to to uh, that, it, it'd be Bridges. The other thing is it could be Cypher related or something like that. I think it was, you know, it's it's something there. It's funny. Um, and it, it's funny that when Norman Reedus is talking, 
I was talking about the explosions and stuff like that. I'm like, that's referencing, it sounds like it's referencing the Big Bang. You know, and it could be. But the explosions, it sounds like, I don't know, to me it sounds like Death Strand, or uh, Survive. You know, um, the explosion. I, I don't know. There's, just, there's many vulnerables and stuff like that I've been picking up on. The gameplay and everything looks excellent. I don't know why people... I, I don't know why people are like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know... How many zombie games are out there? And there's a zombie game that's coming out. It's a Walking Dead game. It better not be a Telltale game. Okay... I'm sorry, I can't get into the Telltale games. They, For me, they suck. The reason why they suck is because most of the fucking story is is either go here, go there, go there. You can't hardly control the character. You know. You make stupid decisions and not... It's like, no, this is a zombie game. A zombie game needs to be like Dying Light. Dying Light looked reasonable when I saw it. I have not got to play it. I hated the Dead Island series. The Dead Island series, I fucking hated it. Because they made it like Skyrim. Or, um... Skyrim or Fallout. Before they they did the whole, um... Let's make every weapon, um... Because, like, okay... The... The Oblivion... Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Fallout 3 had weapon systems where if you use the weapon, it deteriorates and you have to repair it. You know, you swing and hit a rock, it's down like from 100% to fucking 90%. And it's it's ridiculous. I think it, yeah, I thought that was ridiculous because you have to fucking repair it. If not, it breaks and you lose the, the weapon forever. Um... Or it becomes unusable, you know, like, fuck, you know, that's ridiculous, okay, it's metal, you know, they break, you're still, still can be able to use it, you know, um, and Fallout, fall, God, I hated it, because they put the same shit on weapons, like, you know, firearms, to where you're shooting, and then all of a sudden, every shot deteriorates the gun. The hell kind of shit is that? You know? Every shot or every usage of it deteriorates. It's like, this ain't Minecraft, you guys. Come on. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they don't do that with Survive. If they do that, that would be, like, one of the downsides I, I don't like about it. Um... But as I see, I don't really see it. So that, that's good. Um, but like Dead Island, back back to what I was trying to make a point. Dead Island used the same systems and it sucked to where... And no, it's not like you you, you, know, you use it to where it's broken and you can't repair it. You know, you can't repair it because it breaks and it's gone. And you have to craft a new fucking weapon. And it's like, what? You know... It's just really stupid. You know, you have to constantly keep going to, you know, another place to get it repaired so that you're not in a fuck situation, you know. To me, this is going to be a good zombie game. This is going to be a great, great zombie game. And I'm looking forward to it with Metal Gear controls. You know, there's an aspect to it, you know. Um... The nurses, everybody's like, oh, it seems like it's the nurses from Silent Hill. You got to thank people, okay? Um, yes, yes, okay. In that era, everyone wore those clothes. So, in the Silent Hill era where where everything went to shit, they, they had the same clothes. And Metal Gear, they, they had the same thing. And you guys got to understand that. You know, the the era. It's not all about, you know, it's about the era. 
It's not all about, oh my god, it's 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 that clothing from Silent Hill. No, why? Why would you go down that route? Yeah, it makes you think of Silent Hill. But if you look at Ground Zeroes, or at the end of Ground Zeroes, and at the beginning of The Phantom Pain, you see the nurses wear the same outfit. So, really, it's just the time period. I don't know why a nurse would be there like that, but, pff, you know... Okay, you know, I never knew there's nurses on Mother Base or whatever. Um, it seems like they're they're getting dragged in from every time period. That, that's my guess, you know. Um, because, and I think you're in the time period of the Diamond Dog time period. Now, that's my guess, you know. Um, I think in one scene, somebody did mention that when you... You see the the nurse getting up. It's like she looks like she's next to the AI pod. Which that's that's like wow, I never I never noticed that. that that's interesting. Um So I don't know if the AI pod's gonna make it I don't, I mean I don't know. It'd be kinda interesting. A lot of people are like, Oh, they're just using the, the assets. Whatever, okay, cool. I don't know why y'all complain so much. You know, here you guys are. You complain the entire time wanting co-op and Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Or B The Phantom Pain. Um, what's funny is like, okay, if you do co-op on, you know, like one of you guys play Quiet and one of you guys play Snake. That kind of takes away from the whole experience in my point of view. Um, this is the perfect answer to co-op. Whether you guys believe it or not, it is the perfect answer to co-op. Um, you got multiplayer and everybody's wanting co-op. It's like, okay, let's just, let's just, here's for co-op. And then you guys, uh, shit on it. It's like, why? And I guaranteed, I guaranteed, listen, I've said this before and I will say it again. If Kojima was sitting in Konami right at this second and said, I approve, survive. I'm overseeing, survive. You guys will eat that shit up and go, oh my God, look at the graphic, man. Look at that shit. That shit is fucking phenomenal. That shit is fucking right. I cannot wait to play this game. You guys cannot deny that fact. Young year, um, what's his name? Alpha Omega, um, Angry Joe, okay, you guys are the, the mainstream media of YouTubes and information, and the only reason if, and if you guys say no, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, guarantee you, you guys would, if Kojima would come out, and I, I, I hope, I really hope that Konami and Kojima would come out and do like this little test with you guys. You know, I'm making this game with Konami. I approve it. I'm overseeing it. I'm directing it. You guys would gobble that shit up. Every game Kojima has made, you guys gobble that shit up. And you know what? It's cool. You know, because I like Snatcher. I like Police Knots. I like Metal Gear. I'm a Metal Gear fan, you know. I, li I like them all, you know. Um, the, the first game he made, the penguin thing was kind of like questionable, but, but, oh well, that's Kojima for you. Um, you know, it's just, I see the, the fandom, I see the, the, I'm not trying to get graphic here, I'm trying not to get graphic, I'll, I'll think of something, uh, you know, I see people that, you know, I don't know. It's like your favorite celebrity, okay? Your favorite celebrity, um, and you love him for a long time, and you're like looking at him and going, "Oh, you know, so awesome, so awesome." And this is relevant to today. So awesome, so awesome. Comes out. Oh, by the way, he molested uh, a couple kids. He sexually assaulted a couple women. He promised women. You know, and then if if he would come out and say, 
those allegations are false. I didn't do it. Even though there's, there's evidence and he's like, oh, it's false. The people that's for that guy, the people that idolize that guy as their favorite celebrity will side, no matter if the evidence is there, will side with that celebrity. Even though that celebrity would be wrong and he did do it, they would 100% every time side with that celebrity. You know, and it happens time and time again. And it's not it's not nobody's fault. It's just the way the world works. You know, you you're in love like quiet, you're in love with the legend. You're in love with that aspect. You can't let that go. Um you know so I guaranteed, you know, if Kojima would come back and or come to Konami and say, Hey, I'm making this game with Konami, I approve it. Even though it looks stupid as hell. He can he can remake it as a ping one game. Or make it like Metal Gear Ping One or something. And have a ping one walking around with a gun sneaking on a, an island. You guys would eat that shit up and you cannot deny it, okay? Cannot deny it. There's plenty of games that I like of Kojima's, okay? And there's plenty of games I like of Konami's. Um I can't think of one Konami game that's that's been made. Uh, Bomberman. I like Bomberman. I like Castlevania. That's a non-Kojima game. You know, I like those titles. You know, I'm not like a fan. Or not, I'm not like a, you know, a super fan to where, you know, I have a poster of Kojima on the wall or I have a poster of Konami logo on the wall and kissing it every day. No. But I am a fan of the game series. I'm a fan of these people's work. Um, Konami and Kojima have brought so much joy in gamers' lives than any other company I can see, except for like Square Enix. Because, um, you know, Final Fantasy. Or Capcom because of Resident Evil. You know. Um, or Ubisoft because of Assassin's Creed. But, uh, but I mean, it's like... It's just, it's unreal that, that I see that day in and day out of people just, it's like the game hasn't been out yet, you know, and you guys haven't really given it a try, I don't understand that, you know, uh, Young gave it a try and he actually kind of liked it, but then, you know, that fake stupid media came out and then he was like, oh, and, you know, it's just the People are influenced by, like I said, celebrities, celebrities or whatever. They're influenced by their fandoms. You know, they they idolize a person, and they cannot let that go. You know, they think the whole world is doing them wrong, when really, no, that's not how the world works. Um, I think you need to chill your role on that. You know, but that's that's my opinion. You know, um, I don't want everybody to take it seriously and like, you know, that's my opinion. I think people just jumping on the idolizing Kojima crap and not really looking into the big picture and going, you know what? I had to back Konami because, you know, you guys got to remember if there was no, if there was no Koji uh, Konami, there was no Kojima. If there was no Kojima, there was no Konami. Same goes for Metal Gear. Dude, Konami, er, Kojima didn't really want to make Metal Gear. That wasn't his thought. He was going to make something else. And then they want, they, Konami pulled him and said, Hey, this guy left the, this this project and we need you to work on it. So Kon, er, Kojima looked at it and came up with his own design of Metal Gear. You know, it's not... It wasn't like planned. You know, Kojima got pulled on the project. Kojima's like, nah, I think this is wrong. I think we need a stealth game instead of like a gunslinging go in action game. And I guarantee if Kojima didn't see that, Kojima would never ever done Metal Gear. You guys gotta understand this. Um, that is the history. If you guys don't blame me, look it up. Um, Kojima has recently thanked Konami. And it's funny because after that, after. 
Kojima said, I want to thank Konami for doing, let me do whatever I want. And, you know, I'm very grateful to them. Have you noticed that all the fake, stupid media about, oh my god, uh, Konami did this to Kojima. Konami get, did that to Kojima. Have you noticed it all stopped? I have not heard one bad news about that. Think, people. Because now Kojima has said that, and people see that, they're like, fuck, if I post something out about Konami uh, against Kojima or doing something against him, Kojima is going to lash out. Cause to me, to me personally, that was a warning. Kojima's like, hey, 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 people, back the hell off. The hell, you know. I think that was a warning. You know, don't fuck with Konami. Don't mess with my boys, all right? I may not be part of their headquarters, but those are my boys. Don't fuck with my boys. <laughs> you know, that's all that was. Kojima was like, hey, 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 stop. Stop. No, <laughs> you know. And Kojima is a baller like that. Kojima would, would, you know, would just be like, hey, hey. You know, if Kojima was a New Yorker, dude, I could just see him going, hey, 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 fuck off. Fuck off. Hey, hey, back it. Back it. Back the fuck off here. All right? All right? You want to fuck with my boys? You want to fuck with my you go for me? Huh? Huh? These boys treated me good. You want to you wanna go? You know, I think that, that, I think he would do that, honestly. Um... It's it's awesome. Um, I'm sorry for the short episode. I'm going to have to cut it here. Um, nothing really, nothing really new uh, going on. Uh, I did I did made a Reddit page recently. Um, so if you guys want to go to that, it's actually dedicated to Metal Gear Zero. What I think Death Stranding is. And every information that I have, I'm leaking it there. I I don't know if I'm gonna do a theory video. Um, certain things. I think I may put that on hold for a minute until I have all the information I have put out on Reddit. All the hidden little informations I've been given. I. Um, either to that, then I I got nothing. Um. I got the tribute video uploaded, and I just don't know when uh, to release it. It's an emotional video. Well, people really get it. Um, I do do want to say one thing is that uh, I want to announce a couple more games that I've I've got on the list. Was me doing Gears of War. And Halo series, so there's that. Guys, I hate to cut this short, but thank you guys so much. And um, if you guys want any apparel, go to the void. Um, the link's down in the description and below. Get a toboggan, a hat, a hoodie, t-shirt, uh, maybe for a loved one. If, if you got time, if you don't have time, make it like an after thing. Um, support hey support the channel um, there's a couple of things going on with the Diamond Dogs project uh, real quickly real quickly we found our director uh, and it's gonna go good we've been losing and gaining losing and gaining our director so it's going pretty good so yeah hopefully 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 this will stay <laughs> So thank you guys so much for listening to the Reaper Podcast. Stay tuned for more. And I will see you guys next week every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See ya.